do. It's time for questions to the Minister for Employment and Learning. I have to inform the House that question number six has been withdrawn. And we'll start with listed questions. I call Mrs. Brenda Hale. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question one, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, my department plays a full and active part in the delivery of the Executive's Bright Start initiative, particularly in relation to the recruitment and development of the child care workforce. Since 2011, my department has provided funding support for 355 employees to commence training in child care learning and development qualifications across 205 settings at a cost of over 300,000. Level 5 training for managerial staff in childcare settings will become a mandatory requirement in 2016, and as a result, my department will no longer fund, pr pr provide funding support. This is because increasingly limited resources are targeted at encouraging employers to upskill their staff beyond legislative or mandatory obligations they must meet. All further education colleges provide a range of high quality full time and part time childcare courses at a variety of skill levels. In the last academic year, childcare related provision accounted for over 2,500 enrolments across Northern Ireland. In addition, Strand Middles University College provides a degree course in early childhood studies, and the Open University in Ireland provides a range of degree courses in early years and in childhood and youth studies. My employment service supports clients seeking employment in the childcare sector and offers a range of services to meet employers' recruitment needs. Vacancies in the childcare sector are regularly advertised on our recruitment website. Employment service staff recently worked with childcare providers, uh, employer, employers for childcare, in the delivery of job fairs. These events promoted childcare as a career and offered opportunities for industry-related training and employment opportunities. In the past year, my Bridge to Employment programme has assisted 19 people into employment in the sector through customised training related to the skill requirements of specific vacancies. The Career Service can also provide advice and guidance for those wishing to work in the childcare sector. Mrs Hale for supplementary. I thank the Minister indeed for his very detailed answer. And given that we are in increased times of austerity, can you tell the House just how your department is, is encouraging in particular males into this sector and individuals from minority communities? Well, we're very much, um, it's worth stressing um, that all of our um, opportunities are open to people right across the community, irrespective of their, of their background, across gender, ethnicity, uh, re religion, etc. etc. Um, obviously, where there are particular uh, areas of, of underrepresentation, we're always very keen to encourage uh, more and more um, ap applications. Um, we often talk about the issue about underrepresentation of, of females in certain, in certain areas, and the, the members ask questions on that particular theme in, in the past. And the, reserve, the reverse also applies in, in other areas. We want to make sure we're maximising uh, the talent pool to our best advantage uh, as a whole. There are also particular opportunities in terms of uh, the apprenticeship strategy and also the forthcoming uh, youth training strategy. And again, gender considerations will be built in to those particular areas in terms of, of ensuring that we have a balanced representation of people coming forward. In to new opportunities. Ms. Bruna McCracken. I thank the Minister for its response so far. Can I ask the Minister uh, what initiatives have you taken with employers within the child care sector to encourage participation within the Steps to Success programme? Well, in terms of the Steps to Success programme, those are for people who are. Um, uh, unemployed. Um, we have a number of, of contractors and also uh, subcontractors uh, appointed indeed by the, by the contractors. Uh, they are there based upon an out outcome uh, focused approach, uh, trying to get people into employment. So they will be looking for every and every opportunity that exists and, and providing the relevant uh, training and encouragement uh, to people to take up uh, th those op opportunities. And uh, no doubt, they, if, where they see uh, growth in terms of, of opportunities, uh, they will be incentivised to move in that particular direction. Ms. Sandra Overham. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I wonder, does the Minister believe that there is currently a sufficient childcare provision uh, to enable parents to take up part time uh, courses in training and employment? Uh, 
Well, again, thank, thank the member for the question. This is a slightly broader issue than the particular approaches to how we support uh, training uh, for uh, childcare. However, uh, whenever we look at, at uh, some of our different programmes that we are uh, bringing forward, we are very conscious of the, uh, the particular issues that uh, participants may be, be facing, and uh, childcare may well be, be one of those. The, perhaps the most recent example we can cite is the um, economic and activity strategy, where we have uh, recognised that in terms of the inactive population, one of the target groups is those with family commitments, and often that will be predominantly uh, females uh, with uh, childcare uh, responsibilities. And we are looking to see how we can uh, provide innovative solutions uh, to encourage uh, people who are uh, interested in working but who perceive barriers uh, to overcome those barriers and to, particip to, particip to participate fully in the labour market. Well, Ms. Anna Lowe. Thank you. Uh, Minister, I, I was uh, speaking with the employers for childcare this morning about the issue of the shortage of childcare workers. And they were telling me there is a great shortage. You cannot recruit enough qualified childcare workers. But apparently training, uh, trying to get qualifications is very expensive, up to £1,200 per course to get people qualified. Is the there any possibility of helping uh, or subsidising those courses? Well, we are looking at a, at a range of different uh, provision, uh, and uh, one of the interesting developments that will be coming forward shortly is the, uh, uh, the outcome of the review of, of youth training. Uh, where in particular, we will be looking to see how we can support and indeed incentivise training for people who are leaving uh, school at 16 or other young people between the ages of, eight, of 16 and 24 who have not yet accessed employment or have yet have the, the qualifications to access employment. And I think uh, there will be particular opportunities under that strategy in, in, the, in the field of childcare. Mr. Martin O'Miller. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number two. Uh, thank you. I very much welcome the introduction of the uh, John J. Sweeney Scholarship at uh, Ulster University's International Conflict uh, Research Institute. The scholarship is open to all uh, U.S. citizens who have been offered a full-time place on Ulster University's MSc in Applied Peace and Conflict Studies, and who are members or, or who have a familial connection to a member of the American Federation of Labour and Congress of, of Industrial Organisations. This fully really supports uh, my department's uh, stated aim to increase the numbers of inter international students studying in Northern Ireland. I believe it is a coup for Ulster University, which will further enhance the institution's international standing. This is the first year of the scholarship, and my officials have been informed that there are already 18 applicants for this year's intake. Mr. Mueller, first. Colonel uh, Mohegada Frio, last concordias, Mohi has fost a lesson ara. Thank you, Minister. I wonder, uh, given the recent appointment of Tom Moran as Chancellor of Queen's University, uh, this increased interest by a diaspora in our universities, how we can encourage that. Uh, and I asked Minister John Sweeney, of course, was a prominent, eminent member of AFL-CIO. Uh, is there a way we can join together to encourage other labour unions to support scholarships at our universities? Well, first of all, can I very much uh, welcome uh, the appointment of, of Tom Moran. I think that's a, an excellent appointment. I've very written uh, to uh, con uh, congratulate him uh, in that uh, regard. Um, our universities do have to be very much uh, outward uh, facing. Uh, they are not here uh, as universities servicing a, a local market. They are part of Northern Ireland's uh, wider outreach to the world, and they should be seen as global players uh, in the, their, their own right. Um, we do have some very particular challenges at, pre at present with the, uh, the very regrettable cuts that we've had to pass on uh, to uh, universities. We are seeing a situation where we are uh, losing places. Uh, now, universities will be very keen to, uh, to, to uh, encourage more and more international students. That's been a, a long-standing commitment, uh, not least in terms of our current uh, higher education uh, strategy. Uh, but we also have to be very mindful of offering opportunities for, for local students, and there is a very real danger of displacement of students uh, out, out of Northern Ireland to Great Britain or the South of Ireland, or indeed people not going uh, to university at all. Uh, for sure, we can do a lot more around scholarships, and the more scholarships that come forward, including from uh, local businesses or major investors in Northern Ireland, uh, that will uh, in, in itself uh, create opportunities. For example, we have a, a new scholarship programme in terms of uh, computing and engineering, uh, which uh, has, a, a num uh, I think, it's about 20 places on offer, uh, which is moving in, in, in that direction. But, but we need more of it. But in, in themselves, scholarships cannot make up the, the shortfall uh, and the pressures that the sector are, are very sadly facing. At present. Mr. Basil McRae. Question number three. 
Um, preparing our young people for the jobs of the future is a priority for my department and the Executive's programme for government. This includes the provision of training in the performing arts. I know Belfast Met's uh, Tower Street campus will no longer offer dance and drama courses beyond the end of the current academic year. Students currently enrolled at Tower Street will be able to continue and complete their studies at the college. Uh, Belfast Met has been working closely with the uh, South Eastern Regional College on options that might be offered to those wishing to commence performing arts courses from September 2015. The £12 million investment in the new space facility at Cirx Bangor campus will offer students wishing to pursue a career in this area a wide range of high quality courses that will be delivered in a world class learning environment. The courses will mirror those courses currently delivered at Belfast Met. Space includes rehearsal and production studios and a theatre that can permit the staging of professional productions. Performing arts courses will also continue to be provided in Cirx Lisburn campus. Other colleges, including NRC's Bad Money and uh, Newton Abbey campuses, offer a range of performing arts courses from Level 2 through to Level 5, and students will be able to apply for courses commencing in September 2015. Mr McRae for supplement. All very well, Minister, but it does not really address the issue. The performing arts associations have issued a statement. I am sure you are aware of it because Dan Gordon has been quite vociferous. Bangor is too far away for many people and it does not offer the specialist courses that industry needs. People would like to know what you are going to do about it. Well, the, the first thing to, to remark is that uh, we are getting a, a, a very close to uh, almost a, a sense of parochialism here, that if it is not in Belfast, it does not it doesn't work. I am surprised that a, a member from, from, from Lagan Valley, um, a, a member who actually has performing arts um, offered uh, in Lisburn uh, within his own constituency, is buying into the argument if it is not in Belfast, it, it cannot work. We have performing arts colleges that are happening all across uh, Northern Ireland and being delivered very successfully. And if you take the logic of what has been said to, to its conclusion, then, if it's not in Belfast, it doesn't matter. Uh, which is a terrible message to be sending to all of the other five colleges and indeed the students um, who are, are currently uh, functioning there. But also, and I'm sure the member is very much aware of this, we are going through an unprecedented level of cuts in Northern Ireland. Now, I would not like to see any courses being cut, but the sad reality is that we're passing on a £12 million cut to the FE sector uh, this year. Now, I know the member is not uh, responsible for the budget mess that we, we find ourselves in, but I would at least like to think he would acknowledge the context in which the colleges are operating and the, their need to take some very tough decisions. Now, the fact is that this uh, particular decision by Belfast Met has a very clear uh, mitigating uh, factor in the context that we have a brand new state-of-the-art facility coming online in Bangor in, in September of this, year, of this year. It's 13 miles uh, fr from Belfast. And I think if we're, if we're suggesting that it's not on people's doorstep, it can't function, I think we're, we're in a very real danger of missing the point, uh, not least in terms of the fact that we have a, a Northern Ireland of six counties and, and six, uh, six FE colleges. Well, Mr. Fra McCann. I ask Con Coolia, and I thank the Minister for his answer uh, to date. But can the Minister give a breakdown of the current labour market information pertaining to specialist performing arts? Well, I am happy to, to write to, to the member and we can give a, an indication of, uh, of any figures that we have um, on, on file in terms of the employment service uh, around uh, some uh, very uh, particular vacancies that, that, that may exist. We are also developing, in conjunction with, the, with Ulster University, a, a skills barometer, which will give us uh, much better real-time information where there are emerging opportunities uh, in terms of, of the economy. Um, I am not, not, cert not diminishing whatsoever uh, the importance of performing arts to the future of our economy and, indeed, the wider uh, creative industries. They are of absolute importance, as are many uh, other, other subjects. And what I would say, particularly to the, to the member, given that he is uh, from, from Sinn Féin, the answer to the dilemma that we find ourselves in very much lies in the power of his party and indeed the SDLP to be, to be adopting a different approach in terms of, of the current budget madness uh, that, that we are facing because this, this singular approach ar around welfare has already had major knock-on consequences and unless we have a change of course we're going to see this situation deteriorate even, even further ending up with people asking sim similar types of questions uh, and uh, not actually joining the dots as to why that certain things are happening. Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I have the, had the privilege of visiting the BMC Tower Street facility. I have met with uh, students from Belfast, Donegal, Austria, America, and acting and dance, some of whom are already performing in shows like The Vikings in the Fall. 
and in what is clearly a vibrant learning environment. Um, so I'd ask the Minister um, what he would say to students and professionals who uh, genuinely believe that this is a, a wrong decision of uh, Belfast Metropolitan College to apply a 100% reduction to this provision, uh, and who are genuinely concerned that the provision at Cirque Bangor is, is not an appropriate alternative for, for uh, reasoned arguments? Well, what I would say is people should, uh, should uh, visit Bangor, and indeed we had 20 students who uh, took the opportunity only this, this past weekend to go down and to talk to local staff and to uh, view the, the um, emerging facilities and see, and see for themselves that the, the real value of the investment that has been made uh, in, in students for, for, for everyone across, across Northern Ireland. Well, Mr Ross Hussey. Question four, please, Mr Deputy Prime Speaker. The uh, relevant uh, training and skilling of the workforce is vital for local economic development. Uh, this not only applies to the transport and logistics sector, but all sectors of our economy. My officials work with businesses, universities and colleges to identify, plan for and meet workforce development needs through a range of curricular provision from entry level to foundation degrees. I have commissioned the Northern Ireland Centre for Economic Policy to develop a Northern Ireland skills barometer. This will indicate where skills gaps are where they are emerging and where they are forecast to emerge over the medium and longer term. The barometer will help to shape all areas of skills provision. The Ulster University currently delivers a BSc Honours in Transportation and a Master's Degree in Transportation Planning. The University is also planning to introduce a specialism in Logistics Supply Chain Management as part of its Business Studies programme. The Northern Regional College provides two courses at Level 3 for Transport Managers. In academic years 2013 and 14, there were six enrolments and nine in the current year. This course will be available for the forthcoming academic year as well. The officials met recently with representatives from the sector to discuss how they can work more closely together. This includes liaising with the employment service to assist in filling some current vacancies and with the career service on the promotion of the sector within schools. The department is willing to work with and support the sector wherever possible. Mr Hussey for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her response so far. Uh, in your response, Minister, you made reference to the BSc Honours Degree and the MSCA in Transport Planning at UUJ. Is it not a case that these are currently uh, going to be stopped, and is that not very short sighted? Well, again, I would say, say to, to, to um, the member, as, as I said to Mr. McCann um, a, a moment ago, there are a whole, a whole host of things that on the surface seem very short-sighted and uh, nonsensical happening. Um, but we're in a, in a situation where, uh, in the uh, forthcoming year, we're taking uh, 16 million uh, out, of, out of higher education, um, similarly 12 million out of further education. Uh, universities are going to have to take uh, some uh, very uh, difficult decisions. Now, the decisions that were taken were those for uh, Ulster University uh, to make. It is their, their job, not the job of the department, to determine which courses are offered and which ones w w are not. But what they are seeking to do, if I can seek to explain it, is to try to rationalise the courses uh, that are on offer. Uh, and that way, they are better placed to, to maximise the number of, of opportunities for students in, in Northern Ireland. And I appreciate that there are particular uh, consequences for, for the sector from those decisions. What I would say is that we we are in discussions with the sector, and there may well be uh, opportunities that, that may emerge to, to address those particular uh, high-skilled high uh, demands. I would in particular draw attention to the apprenticeship strategy and the fact that we have money under the change fund uh, for, for pilots. And that type uh, of, of, of course, particularly given the, the, uh, the vocational nature to it, uh, to my estimation, would lend itself very readily uh, to a higher level apprenticeship. And that through that course, uh, we may actually see the, the needs of the sector being not only addressed, but actually addressed in a more efficient and effective manner. Mr Gregory Campbell. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, would the Minister undertake to examine uh, issues such as the one was brought to my attention in my constituency, a private sector uh, company, who's, one of whose expertise is training people for HGV courses, and who have found it extremely difficult to compete with other companies whose practices uh, are not as uh, in-depth and comprehensive as theirs are. And uh, some allegations were made about uh, dealings that weren't entirely in keeping with legislation that restricts companies like the legitimate one that came to me? 
Yeah, um, I'd be very happy to take a look at, at the issue, and, and indeed, as a member, could maybe um, drop, drop me a line or an email just to set out uh, some of the particular issues. I mean, some of the factors will be whether we're talking here about an entirely uh, private sector uh, um, situation, or whether we're talking about uh, some degree uh, of, of public sector involvement, uh, and also how that, that's the, the potential way forward. The member suggests was set in, in terms of the, co the context of the contracting uh, of a lot of the skills offer that we have, and also the, the provision within FE, FE and hiring. Education, but I'm more than happy to look at the, the, the particular points the member has raised. Mr. John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I'm sure the Minister would agree with me that transport and logistics is not exactly a new phenomenon. Indeed, it probably dates back to the days of the red flag. Can the Minister explain to us why he's only making plans now for the development of this, and why are these subjects not integrated across a range of degree courses so that we can catch up with the rest of Europe? that are light years ahead of us in terms of training people for transport and logistics. Well, what I would say is the, the issue probably predates the, the, red, the red flag, and uh, people were transporting things before uh, the motor car was uh, uh, invented. Um, we, we have um, historical uh, provision that is situation uh, is evolving. I've explained uh, the context as to why uh, that is, is indeed the case. Uh, but at the same time, um, under my watch, uh, we are developing a, a new approach towards vocational training, both in terms of the apprenticeship strategy and the, the strategy of on, on youth training. As, an, as a member wants to go down the avenue saying, uh, well, why is this only been done now? I mean, this isn't rocket science. Uh, I would remind the member that his party uh, held uh, the, this department in the, in the first mandate of this assembly from 1999 uh, onwards, and there wasn't that revolution in vocational training, if I can use the term revolution, when we're talking about transport, at that particular, particular time, so, but it's now being addressed. Mr. Gary Middleton. Uh, question number five, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, my department has a wide range of measures to address uh, youth un unemployment in the FOIL and will be implementing the, uh, new initiatives from 2015-16 to improve opportunities for young people across Northern Ireland. The Youth Employment Scheme was introduced to help those aged 18 to 24 years old uh, to develop skills to compete for jobs and to sustain employment. In the FOIL and uh, Listic Elven uh, Jobs and Benefit Offices uh, catchment areas, a total of 1,200 young people participated between July 2012 and March 2015. To date, uh, over 400 uh, participants have moved into subsidised or unsubsidised employment. A refreshed youth employment scheme will be introduced from June 2015, subject to funding being available. The main employment programme, Steps to Success, is delivered by EOS NI in the FOIL area. Uh, Steps to Success is available to all eligible uh, job seekers, irrespective of their employability need or age. Clients who are in receipt of Job Seekers Alliance and aged between 18 and 24 will be mandated onto the programme after nine months on benefit. I recently introduced into work training support, enabling clients to undertake short training courses to improve their employability. In addition, Enterprise Alliance, a new measure of support for clients seeking to start their own business, was made available from April. The Department is leading in the development of the United Youth Programme. The target group for, this, for the pilots beginning in 2015 and 16 will be those between 16 and 24 who are not in education, employment or training. We are also undertaking a review of youth training and it is planned that a new uh, proposed youth training system will be available to all young people uh, between 16 and 24, faci uh, facilitating progression into an apprenticeship, further education or sustained employment. And a series of pilot initiatives will be implemented during the, the current uh, financial, uh, financial year uh, prior to implementation in full in the next year. Mr Middleton for supplementary. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his uh, response, and I do uh, welcome the new initiatives and the, the initiatives that he has already had in place. Uh, and could the Minister advise uh, what uh, conversations or what uh, engagement he has had with other uh, ministerial departments in terms of getting the message out there as to uh, how people or how young people get involved in these initiatives? Well, uh, we, we have uh, certainly encouraged uh, other departments uh, to, to offer um, opportunities, and uh, I, I am pleased that uh, I think all my ministerial colleagues have very much understood the logic of that regard. We have also uh, spoken to arms length bodies and indeed to, to district councils around the offering of placements. But again, in, in the current uh, financial context we find ourselves in, particularly where we have a situation where there is inevitability uh, about um, a lot of the, the public sector organisations wishing to, to shed staff, opportunities from the public sector in that context are going to be uh, very limited or indeed next to impossible. Um, 
there is a wider discussion that we have to have around the, 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 the continued program, problem of youth uh, un unemployment. Uh, the member will be, be aware that um, in 2012 um, the executive did uh, come forward uh, with a, a major package of funding over three years to, to fund the youth employment scheme. Now, very sadly, given the, the context around the budget, um, it was never going to be viable for the executive to renew uh, that, that particular pot. So we, we're, we're now in the situation through, uh, from existing resources, and even there's a, there's a question mark over those, as the member will be aware. We're trying to offer a, 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 a more limited package uh, of opportunities. Uh, in terms of uh, direct interventions to help young people. Ms. Maeve McLaughlin. Well, I'd like to, uh, thank the minister for his um, his answers so far. I noted that the minister said there was 1,200 young people who had participated, uh, particularly through I think the youth uh, employment programme, and of that, 400 had moved into um, what you call um, subsidised or unsubsidised em employment. Could I ask the minister maybe? to break that figure down further and to give us an indication of how many of those young people actually moved into quality or sustainable employment? Well, we're happy to come back uh, to, to the member in, in, that, in that regard with, with the precise figures, but it's important to bear in mind that um, there will be a range of different job opportunities out there uh, for, for young people. Uh, some will be um, of a more permanent nature, some will be of, of a temporary nature. All those opportunities are of, of worth, and it's important that we don't create some sort of hierarchy or that we dismiss opportunities for people. It's very important that we encourage young people to, to, to get that experience because it allows them to, in turn, pr to progress to other opportunities or to go back into further education or indeed in, in, into higher education. The worst possible situation is that we get defensive about opportunities and we end up with a situation where young people are essentially left left on the shelf, their, their education or training will, will, go, will go rusty, uh, or we're in a situation where they haven't invested in skills, they will very quickly be overtaken by other uh, cohorts of young people co coming through, and they will, they will then face a life of unemployment or economic inactivity. So it's very, very important for a whole range of reasons that we encourage people uh, on that uh, progression journey. Mr. Colin Eastwood. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the, the Minister for his answers thus far? Of course, uh, the FOIL constituencies get the highest levels of any type of unemployment uh, in all of the Westminster constituencies, and that was the case long before this welfare uh, discussion or crisis, as the Minister likes to talk about. Um, can I ask him, though, what kind of progress are we making in increasing the MASIN at uh, the North West Regional College, who, of course, will be essential in trying to tackle uh, youth, uh, youth unemployment and underemployment? Um, well, uh, first of all, I, I, I concur with the member that uh, there are major structural issues in relation to unemployment and also economic inactivity, uh, which is the, the hidden form of unemployment, uh, which are um, uh, particularly uh, high in, in both particularly high in, in the FOIL uh, consistency. It's a bit of a stretch to, to jump into the issue of Mazen and the potential ex expansion at McGee. Uh, but, but let me let, let, let me let me let me stress: um, we are processing uh, the business case. Uh, we're currently waiting uh, for some revised information uh, coming coming forward from the the, strat the, strat the strategy group. Um, if we are to see an expansion of, of Mazen, um, we need to have the funding to do that, and I'm happy to bid for that. But we have to have a sense of reality about that. I mean, we're talking about uh, a, a, a situation where we're going to need a recurring amount of, of money. Uh, in excess of 29, 30 million uh, every year to, to, to facilitate that, on top of what is a very deep cut in terms of higher education that we're already facing. And the, I hear the members sort of from the sidelines mentioning that's not what you asked. You asked the question about, about Mazen. Uh, is there any progress on increasing Mazen? Well, there's, there's no point in increasing Mazen if you haven't got the money to, to back it up. It's an utterly futile, pointless gesture to be making. I ask the member when. Uh Ask the question to the minister that he allows the minister to answer without being interrupted. I call Ms. Pam Cameron. Question number seven, please. Uh, Mr Speaker, with your permission, I wish to group questions seven and fourteen and would request an additional minute uh, for the answer. Uh, latest published figures indicate that uh, as at the end of January this year, uh, 461 apprentices from the South Antrim consistency were undertaking apprenticeship NI funded training in a range of subject areas. Engineering is the highest programme occupancy, occupancy in any single area, with 88 apprentices. Of the overall number, uh, 228 apprentices are working towards Level 3 apprenticeship framework qualifications, including 46 undertaking a Level 2 en route to Level 3 and 233 are working towards Level 2 apprenticeship framework uh, qualifications. 
The department is also in the early stages of testing at higher level apprenticeships as part of the implementation of the new uh, strategy. Between 2013 and 14, 106 people took up, uh, took up those opportunities across Northern Ireland. However, it is not possible at this stage to break those figures down at a consistency level. At present, seven high, um, higher level uh, pilots are, on, are underway across five occupational areas, in, including professional services, ICT, engineering, accountancy, and life sciences. Off the job training in respect of these pilots has, has been tested um, by four FE colleges, including the, the Northern Regional College. And they're working with employers, uh, including uh, Strader Electronics, uh, AES Limited, and Michelin, to, uh, to deliver an engineering apprenticeship. In total, there are now over 120 higher-level apprenticeships working in 46 uh, different employers across Northern Ireland. That ends the period for listed questions. We now move on to topical questions. Question one has been withdrawn. I now call Ms. Bronwyn McGoggin. Can I ask the Minister, regarding my own constituency of Fermanagh South Tyrone, in terms of any inquiries that the Department has carried out um, regarding uh, the review of post-19 special educational needs in respect of further education and disability employment services, can the Minister give me up any updates on how that's progressing? Well, I okay, thank the Member for her ongoing interest in, in, in this area. Um, as a member will know, we have conducted an audit in terms of the uh, further education uh, provision uh, acro across Northern Ireland in, in, the, in those uh, particular areas. And again, that's an area where we are trying to, to preserve things in terms of the, the pressures that are being uh, faced uh, by um, th that sector and indeed others uh, at, at present. Um, the, the issue in terms of transitions is being discussed um, at an executive subcommittee level. Uh, it is one of the topics that is discussed by the, uh, the Bamford um, com Committee dealing with mental health and learning dis disability issues, and indeed uh, an action plan uh, has recently been agreed across departments as to how to better coordinate services uh, in, in that uh, particular regard. There are obviously uh, a range of different uh, players in this regard. Um, of, my department has a role to play in terms of further education. There's also roles in terms of the of Department of Education in terms of planning better for transitions, and also the Department of Health in terms of what they can do with regard to day centre uh, provision, and also uh, DRD in, term, in terms of transport facilities. So work is underway uh, with departments trying to ensure a more coordinated approach, uh, but it's important to bear in mind, again, as with everything at this stage, we are hampered by, by lack of finance. Ms McGuckin for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his, his response. Can I ask the Minister uh, what engagements you have had with South West College um, regarding the, the area of post-19 special educational needs within the Fermanagh South Tyrone area? Well, um, the, the college the, the themselves, and as the member knows, are, are extremely um, proactive in, in virtually every area of work that they do, and they're also very much part and parcel of the community. Uh, so we have, we've had ongoing discussions with the college around the whole spectrum uh, of, of their, their activity. Like others, I mean, they're trying to do their best and under very trying circumstances to ensure that they can continue uh, to, to, uh, to deliver. Um, they are conscious of, of issues around trying to ensure that there's a, a level playing field in terms of provision across all of the, of the different areas. Areas, and uh, in that regard, they're, they're not um, uh, any different from any of the other colleges, given that there are always issues around uh, uh, ensuring that there is equal provision in different parts of Northern Ireland, and it's virtually impossible to, to provide that, given the, the nature of geography and also the limitations of funds. Before I call the next speaker, Hansard are having some difficulty with the mics. If the members could direct their mic towards them when they're speaking. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for an update on the strengthening the All Ireland Research Base programme? Um, yes, well, there's a number of different uh, initiatives underway uh, in this regard, and it's important that, uh, as the member will, will know, that um, we seek to develop more and more collaboration in terms of, of high level uh, re research. Um, this is a, I mean, a global phenomenon that's what's, what's expected in, in this regard. Um, several years ago, um, I signed a, an agreement uh, with uh, Richard um, Bruton, um, the, my equivalent uh, in the Republic of Ireland, in terms of a partnership between the Science Foundation Ireland uh, and my own department in relation to supporting uh, collaborative uh, funds, funding on a north-south basis in research. And uh, indeed, um, we announced uh, a number of projects in that regard. Um, um, 
during the, the month of May. Hopefully the member um, w was aware of that and we can provide uh, further details um, in, th in that regard if, if she wishes to, to, to receive those. Uh, also, um, the, the executive is very keen that we maximise the drawdown from Horizon uh, 2020 and some very uh, challenging targets have been set uh, in that regard. The collaboration that we do, uh, particularly around the SFI Dell uh, investigators uh, programme, uh, gives us a very strong foundation in which we can then move into Horizon 2020. But other collaborations happening in that, in that regard um, already, and of course, given its European funding, they are very keen to push collaboration between uh, different jurisdictions in that regard. We are very hopeful that there will be um, some very strong progress uh, around Horizon 2020 over, over the, the, the coming months. And again, I, I urge the member to, to look out uh, for that. Finally, I would stress as well that um, we are privileged to be part uh, of the uh, US Ireland uh, Research and Development uh, Alliance, um, which is a, an agreement between uh, both jurisdictions on the island and the, the US State Department. And again, that sponsors a number of collaborative projects, again, that, that we're, we're seeking to uh, build upon all of our diff different strengths and to make a, that much bigger impact. Call Ms Boyle for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for his response? Uh, Minister, is there, uh, can you detail, if you can, any specific uh, areas of research, research that is currently uh, taking place under the programme and how they are advancing? Gurmagat. Yeah, well, well, I think what, what we will do, we'll, we'll uh, send on um, the, the, the copy of the press release and the, the, the associated information that will list all of the, the, the different programmes that, that are happening. Um, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm not going to try to attempt to list all the, the, different, the different areas, but the member will be aware of the general priorities that we have in terms uh, of research, um, particularly around areas such as the life sciences, um, things like cyber security, um, ag ag agri agriculture, ag agri-food, um, uh, things like nanotechnology, um, other areas of life sciences. So there, those are areas where we believe that there are, there are strengths on both sides uh, of, the, of, the, of the border and uh, where we are very keen to build on existing strengths. But we will ensure that the member has the, the full list of, of, uh, of the projects and who's undertaken them and the, the different, different institutions that are involved with them. Well, Ms. Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister when he expects to make an announcement on the reconstitution of the Further Education College's governing bodies? Well, uh, it's not a formal reconstitution as such, because we're going through a process uh, of, of, uh, of gradual incremental change, uh, but there are um, a number uh, of uh, governor posts uh, that, that we will be seeking to, to fill uh, within, within the coming weeks. Um, I think that, that is at a, a fairly advanced stage, and given the nature of public appointments, as the member will well know that as a minister, um, I simply sign off on the, uh, the, 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 uh, the specification at the outset of the process, and then I have no role until recommendations come forward to me in terms of the, uh, the panels who uh, study the, the different applications uh, for me then to make the, the final appointments. We're not quite at that stage just yet, but my understanding is that will, will be with me uh, within the next few weeks. Ms. Bradley for supplementary. Uh, thank you, the Minister, for his answer. And following along the same uh, vein to do with further education colleges, um, and the Minister might have answered this partly earlier, uh, with the transfer of community development and our urban regeneration um, to councils next year, how does the Minister believe that colleges can collaborate with our local councils to tackle underachievement uh, and low education within their areas? Yes, very much happy uh, to, to encourage that. Um, at the, uh, in January of this year, I hosted a dinner between um, the, the incoming chief executives of the, um, the, the 11 councils and also the uh, directors of the six FE colleges, very much to spark those type of, of conversations. Um, I know that um, there are a number of, of um, this has been pursued uh, already uh, in that regard at different speeds in different parts of Northern Ireland. I think I'm uh, hearing some very strong noises in terms of the, the Northern Regional College area. BMC, again, will be very proactive in that area with, with Belfast uh, uh, City Council. So in terms of the members' own area, I mean, that, that work is, is, is happening. There is a very clear opportunity in terms of, of uh, community planning and urban regeneration for colleges. Also, whenever they are uh, developing their own community plans, uh, skilling and upskilling will be key elements in terms of what they're seeking to around the economy and they will quite rightly be looking to FE colleges to provide a lot of these solutions. We are trying to encourage FE colleges to be the first point of contact uh, for businesses and, uh, and also by extension councils uh, at, a, at, a, at a local level, appreciating that uh, Northern Ireland isn't homogenous and there are different specialities uh, in, in different areas, so again that's an opportunity. We've also recently devolved um, what was formerly known as the, the Department Set Skills Solutions Service uh, to the FE colleges. So, um, 
Previously, uh, whenever businesses wanted to have uh, out, um, uh, solutions found for their particular trading needs, they would have gone to uh, centralised services. We now take the view that that is better uh, devolved through the FE colleges, where they already have a business development infrastructure, and it is best to build upon that and have uh, that seen as the first point of contact for uh, local businesses. So we will reroute contacts back to the FE colleges with, with a stronger localised uh, knowledge uh, to, to engage uh, with their local community. Call Mr. Paul Frey. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask uh, the Minister to provide an update on the work ongoing at present uh, to assist the JATI workers at this time? Yes, we, I mean, there's, there's a number uh, of different initiatives that we are uh, committed uh, to, to doing. Um, one is uh, the potential uh, pursuit of an application to the uh, European Anti-Globalisation Fund. On previous occasions, I have reported to, to the Assembly the parameters around which um, a bid does need to be, to be made and the potential difficulties uh, that we uh, would perceive in terms of trying to see how JTI would fit uh, in, into that. Uh, ultimately, it will be a decision for the Department of Work and Pensions in London to take forward a bid, given the, 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 the national government in this regard. Uh, and again, that discussion will, we will have to have. The, that bid can only be made in the context of the redundancies actually becoming live, and as the member knows, there is still some time, time away. This is a, a rather unusual situation to, to come before us. Um, again, while not wishing to disrupt uh, the ongoing work in terms of the factory, which is of, of importance and indeed is, 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 has been intensifying, if, if anything, in recent months, um, there is a commitment from JTI uh, that they will work closely with, both with the department and also with uh, Northern Regional College over a skills audit and then looking to see what additional courses can be put in place uh, to facilitate uh, retraining of workers who are affected by redundancy. Call Mr. Frew for a supplementary. And I thank the Minister for his very detailed uh, answer today. Can he give this House an assurance that he will continue to work and provide support to JTA employees and also work as he has been doing and his officials have been doing with InvestNI uh, and with uh, the local council uh, as they have set up now a working group on this very issue? And, and, and further to that, I'm happy to give that, the member that reassurance. I, I am conscious uh, of the, the interest of um, the, the outgoing Ballymena uh, Borough Council, which is now mid and East Antrim. I think my, my, uh, my, my lingo correct in, in this regard, uh, and I know they are very keen uh, to, to work with them. We have also um, highlighted the potential for what are um, a critical mass of highly skilled workers, particularly with engineering skills, potentially coming on the market. And as the member will know, there are companies out there in the engineering who are keen uh, to recruit. So we are seeing what we can do to, to match uh, workers uh, coming out of JTI with, with opportunities. Again, we, we need to be conscious of the time skills around this because we want to respect the company's uh, ongoing business needs. Uh, but I am more than satisfied that there is a full commitment from them to work with us at the appropriate time to make sure that we fully uh, implement the opportunities that, that are there to, to assist the workers. Well, Mr Alban McGuinness. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, during the course of the general election, which I had the honour of standing as a candidate, unfortunately I was not elected, <laughs> but anyway, uh, be that as it may, uh, I attended a, a meeting which uh, a, a very distinguished uh, local uh, businessman claimed that um, he could uh, double his workforce in IT uh, if, in fact, uh, the skills were available. And I know the ministers put effort into skills, but he was claiming there's still no breakthrough in terms of that range of skills in IT. What further measures can the Minister take in relation to expanding the range of skills in IT? Well, first of all, I welcome the member's interest in the, the IT sector. I mean, it is a, a sector with, with huge potential in terms of the, uh, the local economy, and it's also one that has grown uh, very significantly over, over recent years and indeed uh, never really experienced a, a recession as such, uh, unlike uh, some other areas. Um, we have a, an ICT uh, working group um, which brings together universities, colleges, uh, government departments and, and the business community to map out the needs um, of the sector and indeed there is a meeting uh, scheduled um, for a couple of weeks' time to, to review progress in that, in that regard. There is a, a global shortage of, of IT skills, so Northern Ireland is not alone in this regard in having this particular um, pressure point. But we have a range of different interventions that we are uh, taking forward. We have seen a significant uh, increase in the number of, of places at uh, university 
university, uh, and indeed an increase in the, in the interest and application rate uh, to those. Indeed, where we announced uh, a, a, the rebuilding of the Bernard Crossland building at Queen's uh, earlier on uh, this year to, to facilitate uh, expansion in, in, in that regard. And notwithstanding the cuts that the higher education sector is facing, I'm pleased that they, they have given the commitment to seek to protect narrow STEM, uh, which is of particular relevance to the IT sector. We're also looking to develop um, higher level apprenticeships uh, in, in IT and again we have one of our early work uh, in, in the, under the new strategy as a sector partnership in, in that regard. We also develop a number of different uh, academies under our Shear Skills programme working um, uh, predominantly in the IT sector around areas such as data analytics, um, cloud computing, uh, software testing and again that's proving a very good way of actually providing an effective conversion course uh, for young people uh, to enter the, the, the IT sector. But obviously we would like to do more and, uh, and uh, what's important is that we have the resources to do more and also through careers a good throughput of young people interested in, in, in uh, skills and careers in this area. Time is up. We must now move